Hey y'all, this is Julie here and I am thrilled to be with Madison, who happens to be our new Sons and Daughters intern. <laughs> she just moved here from Alabama yeah. and I had her on today with me because we are going to be jumping into part two of the Waiting Well series and we're going to be touching on singleness. Mm -hmm. And I know for me, anytime people are talking about something that... Um, is important to me and pertains to my life in such a specific way, I kind of prefer that those people actually be in the season of singleness or parenting or marriage. Yeah. And I love that Madison is in fact single. <laughs> um, although if we get like a ton of inquiries, we're not gonna direct message you her number or anything like no, that. So don't even don't. try. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm um, wanting to just really bring a message today of encouragement and hope mm -hmm. and reality. Because I think when people are um, too much living in their heads about what it means to be single, mm -hmm. a lot of um, the divine reality of the gift of singleness is taken out of the equation. Yeah. It's just so much about what they don't have. Yeah. And the focus isn't on what they do have. And I know Madison, you've recently come out of what God led you into a mm -hmm. year of singleness. And I'd love for you to just talk about kind of what steps were leading up to that and what you got out of it and just, um, yeah. 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 So I was in a pretty unhealthy relationship, um, around December of 2016. And I knew God was calling me to lay that down. We had already walked through several areas where I had just began to surrender everything to God. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I like really had a tight grip on dating. Sure. And that was always, I think, one, because I was scared to be alone. And two, I had always put my identity and who that person was or in yeah. that relationship. And yeah. I didn't know who I was. And so um, I knew God was calling me to singleness, mm -hmm. and I personally just prayed about it, asked Him how long, and felt like He was asking me to give Him a year. Yeah. And it was not the easiest thing at first for me, because like I said, it was the hardest area. Yeah. Uh, and there were even a few times into that 2017 year where, like, guys would show interest in me mm -hmm. or I even went on one date like or pretty early on okay. and God just slammed those doors one by one he was wow. like no like you you told me you were gonna give me this year yeah. commit to that and I mean he wouldn't even let me focus on dating but it was amazing I mean it was the best decision I've ever made yeah yeah so now on the other side of that year what would you say are some of your main takeaways the things that you wouldn't you wouldn't trade all the dates in the world <laughs> but yeah, the alone time with God, contrary mm -hmm. to what I thought, you know, I thought I'd be afraid to be alone, but yeah. I didn't feel alone at all. God was with me the entire way through. I, from the outside, my life probably looked a little boring because I spent so much time at home alone, but I was in prayer, I was in His Word, I was worshiping, watching sermons, listening to podcasts, just like digging into getting to know God's heart more than ever before, and it has changed me. I know who I am now in God. I know who my God is. I'm more content, joyful, happy than I've ever been. And so it was like absolutely necessary, yeah. I would say. That's amazing. Yeah. And good for you for just taking those steps because it is scary. It is scary to be alone, to venture into the unknown of intimacy with God. And I know in my own life, um, I've thought I was intimate with God, mm -hmm. and then when I experienced the true level of Him drawing me near, of Him drawing me in, when I answered it, when I didn't allow the distractions of the world to get in yeah. the way, it was such a different level. Mm -hmm. It really was, like from yeah. glory to glory, yeah. and so impactful. Yeah. I mean, that shapes who you are as a yeah. person. So for your identity, do you feel like you come out of that with a more, um, a clearer idea of who Madison actually is. Oh yeah, is. absolutely. I did not know who I was before that because mm -hmm. like I said, I was someone who always kind of bounced from one pointless relationship to the next mm -hmm. and I put all my hope, all my identity in the other person and that's so dangerous. And so 
now I know, like, I'm a daughter of the King. I know um, more about my heart because I know God's heart and just who He's calling me to be and who yeah. He's, um, what He's placed in me and, like, the gifts that He's placed in me and how to use those to impact the kingdom. And so, yeah, I, I can fully say now I know who I am, but just a year ago I didn't. And it just took, it took that alone time with God to discover that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. Because I um, have a similar but completely opposite story. So I, I did, I checked all the boxes of moving forward in my life. Um, got married young and then had children. And somehow in the midst of that, because before I met Addison at 18, pretty much when I met Addison is when I got saved. So all of it was... Um, combined in such a way that it kept me from knowing mm-hmm. who was Julie, yeah. what was my true identity. And I went into these roles, I jumped into these roles excited and anticipating everything that they had to offer. But in the midst of it, I didn't allow God to show me who I was. Mm-hmm. I just took on the identity of wife. I yeah. took on the identity of mom and was left confused Mm -hmm. and discontent which then led to a lot of guilt for feeling like I was ungrateful for these things that everybody wants that everybody is waiting for in their life and yet I hadn't allowed the work of God to take place I hadn't allowed him to form me into the person he had meant for me to be I had just um I had become what I thought I was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And even mixed up in there was an element of pretending like everything was a lot better than it was for me. Yeah. Because when things are put on a pedestal, when mm-hmm. finding your husband, f- um, having children, getting a home, whatever it is, getting your dream job, when these things are put on a pedestal, and they're given to us before the character is built yeah. that can withstand the weight yeah. of these um, entrustments from the Lord. We are left faltering. Mm-hmm. And I liked being on a pedestal. I liked having friends yeah. who were in their young 20s. Like, you're so lucky. You found <laughs> um, your soulmate. And <laughs> you have everything. I like yeah. that. The humanity inside of me really liked that. Yeah. So I kept on pretending, and yeah. I kept on pretending, and just wanted to, wanted to fake it till I make it, essentially. Yeah. And and you felt you had everything. But I did without God, like you have nothing. Yeah. You know, what does that even mean if yeah. God's not there first? Absolutely, absolutely. And it was. It was in the midst of. Um, just responsibility Mm -hmm. and distraction. And not to say family and spouse and these things are a distraction, but that's the true gift of singleness. Mm -hmm. It's having the time. And time is so precious. So to have that time to go, to be alone with the Lord, Mm -hmm. to just focus in on who He is and who He's calling you out to be is precious. It is. And not to be squandered. No. It's... Oh, that's just so beautiful. And Paul talks about singleness in 1 Corinthians 7, verse 35, which I wanted to share, because he he's discussing why singleness, and to try to be single if you can stay single, um, but why it's, it's healthy, and it is a gift, because two reasons, it promotes good order, and it secures an undistracted devotion to the Lord. Yeah. I mean, when we change our perspective on that, and we realize what singleness is for, we can utilize that time and focus on becoming a healthy individual in it. So get good at the process and prioritize your time Mm -hmm. well. I feel like a conversation I have a lot with specifically young single girls is talking about how they have so much time and you do and you don't. Yeah. We all have 24 hours in a day. Exactly. And you have to get good at prioritizing it like you had a husband and four children. Because eventually that time will fill. Yeah. It's like empty space. Mm -hmm. It gets filled. Mm -hmm. And so if you will structure your life in such a way where those things, that time with the Lord or working out, eating Mm -hmm. healthy, the things that they take time, they take effort, they take intentionality. Mm -hmm. If you'll structure your life in a way where those things 
are prioritized, then when the rest fills in, those will still be at the top. Right. Because I'm sure anyone, anyone who's ever said, oh, I'll do it later, I have so much time, has seen where that procrastination, it doesn't pan out that way. Mm -hmm. You do, even when I have done things thinking like, I'm gonna get a head start on this, and I'm gonna do it, and then I'll be so far ahead, I end up like, I'm glad I did it then, because there was no other space for it. Yeah. I thought it was some kind of head start, and it wasn't, it yeah. was just, the appropriate time for that to take place because there was the availability yeah so really structuring your life in that way when mm -hmm. you have all this extra time and just giving up yourself we want you guys to know we recognize that it is painful at times especially as we come into a new year and maybe people have said in 2017 i'm gonna find my spouse mm -hmm. i'm going to be getting married i'm going to to start the dream yeah and that's painful you know hope deferred makes the heart grow weary yeah but don't stop hoping mm -hmm. because there's so much in this process for you this process of singleness that God just wants to draw you near he really wants to establish him as first he wants to establish you in your true identity so that you can enter into a marriage as a whole person yeah it's not two halves making a whole to have coming into a marriage make a mess. Yeah. Let me tell you from experience. <laughs> you come in as a whole yeah. and then you give. Marriage is just a greater level of service. It's a more intimate level of service. And that is the best way to do that is to come in ready, to come in prepared, to come in. You don't show up to a work site to build someone's house, like, you know, needing all of the necessary mm -hmm. equipment. If that's not helpful, right. you're really not doing anyone a favor by, by doing that. No. If you're not interested in serving, then um, maybe search your heart if marriage actually is for you. Yeah. But um, I just want to leave you guys with, in Psalms 1, it talks about your pleasure and passion remaining true to the word of I am. You'll be planted firm like a flourishing tree bearing fruit in every season of your life. You don't have to wait to bear fruit. You don't have to find the one to bear fruit. God wants to use you now. He wants to use you today. Mm -hmm. And if you'll take your eyes off of your circumstance, the fact that you're still single, or if you just shift it. Yeah. It's just a shift of perspective, seeing it as the gift that it is, seeing it as the, the pleasure, just the pleasure and the delight that the Lord takes in you yeah. having this excess time and choosing to spend it with Him. Yeah, it's, it's a season like any other because mm -hmm. when you do get married, yes, you'll still have alone time with the Lord, but you will never have this amount of alone time with God. It yeah. is just you and God. And to also remember that if you feel lonely, like yeah. you are never alone. God yeah. is always with you through every step of your singleness. So it's not this process to be dreaded. Yeah. It's actually a season to celebrate. Yeah. And gather other single people. Yeah. And talk about how great it is to be single. Because yeah. it is great to be single. And if you are bolstering one another on towards the goodness of something as opposed to sitting around and crying about the fact that your husbands haven't come along yeah. or making lists together, like even that, make lists with the Lord mm -hmm. and make lists about yourself. Like we yes, touched become on your list. Exactly. <laughs> I love when Hannah said that. Becoming yeah, your list. Too. So this is the second of our series. We will have more for you guys. And we'd love to hear from you. What about this um, relationship? And not even just on singleness. On dating. On dating well. On doing it well. What would you guys like to hear? Because really, that's what we're here for is you. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks. so much, Madison. Thank you.